The impact of climate change on urban areas is quite severe. A rising number of weather events like um, heat waves, storms or even uh, heavy rains that are especially influencing cities in a sense of that cities ex are experiences or urban contexts are experiences, heat stress for example. Uh, heavy rain causes flooding especially, um, but also runoff water is destroying properties, is destroying infrastructure or is mixed with wastewater and then entering our river systems and lakes. If we don't manage to stabilize our climate, we will need huge investment in terms of climate adaptation. So firstly, we would always think about mitigation, because the more we achieve, the less adaptation basically we need. But we know we will not be able to not suffer from climate change. The climate change will happen. And this is what the adaptation means, the adaptation to the effects of climate change. to urban design you have these two fields. You have the, the, the urban design that is a lot about heat, uh, reducing heat stress in the city and nature-based solutions play a role there. And the other side is water-sensitive urban design. Both are interlinked, especially through nature-based solutions. When it comes to heat stress in cities, um, I think there are four principles. First of all, we have to provide shade. You can do this by architecture, by the architecture itself of buildings, but you also can do this again through nature-based solutions, through vegetation. You can plant trees, for example, that provide shade. Cooling. Uh, the cooling effect could be through measurements like water surfaces or urban wetlands, where we make transpiration and also evaporation simply possible. Another thing is the, uh, that we have ventilation corridors within cities. Big open areas that come from the outskirt of the city towards the inner cities that are, have uh, no buildings put in place there that can hinder the winds to circulate into the city. But also on smaller scale, we can work with these little winds um, to uh, bring air in streets or to bring air into smaller blocks, for example. We could also make sure that these areas here maybe stay as open areas and transform them into green space. The fourth measurement is about solar reflectance. It is uh, two things. On the one hand, it is the reflection of solar incidence. And on the other hand, it is also about how materials are heated up and how they produce waste heat. And what we know is that very smooth materials and also light colored materials have a much higher solar um, reflectance index, for example, as materials that are very porous and, and dark. This could basically mean that dark roofs are not a good choice anymore, that we basically try to rather have light roofs or even turn them into green roofs that then again can have more functions also in, for example, storing rainwater. I think one of the early projects and also one of the biggest projects I know scale-wise in Berlin is still the Potsdamer Platz. Um, it's a development where you can see a very complete rainwater management system been put into place and running since now over 30 years. In the last year, the river of Spree only had 10% of the water level it normally had. So this is really a, a problem. So too much water in a very short time on the one hand, and then these drought periods in the past three years. And having a system like that in place, it's basically a sponge city project. It is storing rainwater and making it usable. 75% of the rainwater is collected on the roofs. Then we have these large surface water areas 
One we see here, we have water channels going over there, all the way going up, crossing basically the plaza in front of the uh, theater. And this is also containing rainwater. It is humifying the, the air. It is also um, treated by um, treatment biotope of vegetation. And it is of course also contributing to the positive, very social atmosphere here. What we have also implemented, but hidden from view, are water uh, tanks or water cisterns, where you basically also collect rainwater. And the rainwater is used to flush toilets in the office buildings. It is basically also showing how very multiple elements are implemented here to deal with rainwater and to harvest it and make it use in the open space, but also beyond. about Hamburg is that we have a green network um, which is quite unique that relates to the rivers um, that creates also a green uh, a ring and several green axes which is one of the, the major benefits of Hamburg to have such an extensive green blue network. We are here in the in the middle of the Elbe River because Hamburg is based in the in the Elbe Delta it has one of Europe's largest ports and this new city, Hafen City, it's based in a former harbor area. And what we see here behind us, it's a former harbor basin. So it's a new urban district, uh, one of the largest urban development projects in Europe. And now on the other side of the Elbe River, we also have a, a part of the port which has become derelict over the last 10 years. There is a huge structure of a former logistical center. We are now looking at this space, um, which is called the Kleine Grasburg, um, to also develop that into a new urban quarter. We are using the principles that we developed here in Hafen City, but we are basically taking it to another level that even finds answers to the most future-looking technologies, the urban challenges and, and also nature-based solutions in a more forward-looking uh, way. And staying in Hamburg, it's also worthwhile to look at some policy approaches. Then implementing measurements should also be enhanced and supported by policies. And one policy that has been put into place in Hamburg is a rainwater policy called RISA. schon vor einigen Jahren das Pilotprojekt RISA, Regenwasserinfrastrukturmanagement, aufgelegt, das im Prinzip das Ziel hat, nicht in Siele abzuleiten, sondern möglichst viel Retention zu betreiben, also Stauflächen zu haben. Die gesamte Entwässerung soll oberflächennah sein. Das heißt, in den Gebieten, die wir entwickeln, haben wir viele Grabensysteme, Muldensysteme. In den neuen Gebieten, die wir planen, müssen eigentlich alle Freiräume so geplant sein, dass sie bei Starkregenereignissen auch ähm, ein, zwei, maximal drei Tage äh, Stauflächen sein können. Das heißt, die Grünflächen da soll, die liegen immer etwas tiefer, sodass das Regenwasser sucht sich ja seinen Weg nach dem Gefälle nach, ähm, dort sich einstauen kann. Auch Sportflächen, Sportplätze können einen Tag unter Wasser stehen, ohne dass sie äh, rundum erneuert werden müssen. Das ist ein großes Thema bei uns. This place where we are now, it's called the, the Magellan Terraces and it was one of the first public spaces that was created here in Hafen City. And this was very important to create a framework for the urban development through creating a flood adapted public space. 
which means that what we see here, these terraces with these um, stairways, with this uh, level we see down there, this is basically like a stage for the flood. So it's really a shared space concept between people and water. And this is, I think, what also makes the city quite exciting because you, you realize that you are living in a delta. You can feel the water also taking the space that you are also using. And this means that you get also more aware of the dynamics of living with the water. Es gibt jetzt die Gründachstrategie. Das ist eine besondere Förderung zum einen, um Gründächer zu schaffen. In the year 2014, Hamburg set up a so-called green roof strategy, which means that they defined a target and a strategy how to motivate the investors and the architects to create green roofs and also to create green facade. Hamburg, again, is a very special case because it's also much closer to the coastlines. So floods is a topic there. While in Berlin, rather water scarcity is a forefront issue. Within the climate adaptation strategies of many cities, greenery or nature-based solutions in general are of great importance. Um, and trees are, I would say, keystones within these strategies. Planting trees in parks, but especially also in streets, in residential streets like this one. Overall, in the city of Berlin, we have urban woods and we also have street trees. I think we have about one million street trees in this city. So Berlin is known for its street-lined roads. Um, and the challenge is especially that we did not have much rain in the past years. So we do have a shortage in rainfalls, even though we do have heavy rains. But a lot of times the rainwater runs off and is not captured within the city and it does not offset the dry periods we have been facing in the past let's say five years especially in the past three years so right now we do have street trees actually dying um, we, de we are desperately in need to find solutions to water trees in such uh, heat periods and um, one example to do that are trench coat systems. So this can be part of a trench system where basically we have a water storage under the tree that waters the tree in dry periods. And also you have the chance to add water through this uh, system if there is not much in the storage itself. And staying on Hamburg, they have an interesting project running uh, within the Clever, Clever City program. They creating a project that's called Corridor. It is combining nature-based solutions like green roofs, green facades, and also street tree planting, street redesigning, with the um, participation of the local community. The Clever City project, it is an EU-funded research project on nature-based solutions uh, related to the issue of uh, social inclusion and co-creation. And it's to look at parts of the city which are not like like here in Hafen City, it's not about the new urban district. So the idea of Clever Cities is how to use public spaces by, and by introducing nature-based solutions, how to make also um, a link with different people, how to link them with each other um, and how to how to involve them, not only the, the rich and people who can pay for expensive solutions, but people from all different social groups in the, the co-creation, in the co-design and the co-implementation of these nature-based solutions. People need to learn to live with the water, to feel that they are part of this dynamic still, although we live in a city. And I think that's the mindset and that's the special thing about Hamburg, that it's not a contradiction to be urban, to have a modern lifestyle, but still to relate, to adapt 
also your lifestyle um, to this am amphibious environment of integrating the water. And if we keep in mind that children and young people, but also elderly, a lot of groups are using these open spaces. And we need their understanding of these spaces also to make some of these measurements also working. So if we understand measurements like um, rainwater management as something that can be also a teaching for our young people to understand how water cycle, for example, works. If we want to do recycled water um, on a big scale. We need the citizens to understand what happens to things you flush down your toilet and so on. So I think the water sensitive redesign of cities and also the heat related redesign of cities, the planting of new tree needs also active citizens who are aware of these measurements. And yes, a lot of times we also need their help to make them work in the end.